Hey everyone, my name is Wedge, and today we're looking at arguably the most valuable slash exciting dual deck ever printed. Divine vs. Demonic is an exciting pair of tribal strategies filled with really awesome cards. If there was a single reason to buy the dual decks anthology, Divine vs. Demonic might be it. Seriously, I'm not exaggerating, these decks are sick. Let's start with the Divine deck. Above all else, this is an angel tribal strategy. Want to know how I know that? 14 angels. Yeah, not only that, but the rest of the deck is filled with life gain spells and auras to enhance your angel's power. The deck is pretty much as flavorful as you can get and relatively straightforward. You've got your gigantic super bombs for the late game in Akroma Angel of Wrath, Luminous Angel, and Rayad Dawnbringer. These are all huge and really difficult to deal with without a straight removal spell. To get you to that point of the game, you have cards like Sustainer of the Realm, Sarah Advocate, Acacian Priest, and Angelic Page. These all make combat a lot more difficult for your opponent while remaining solidly angel-themed. Since it's obvious that you have to make it to the late game to drop your big angels, you need spells to help you get there. Not just any spells though, angelic spells. Angel Song, Face Fetters, Pacifism, and Righteous Cause are all really annoying to deal with. Fetters and pacifism hold back the biggest demon, while Angel Song and Righteous Cause both make your opponent feel bad for attacking. Now that's a strategy I can get into. Guilt your opponent to death. I, I really like this a lot. The rest of the deck is a mixture of smaller creatures like Angelic Protector and Charging Paladin, combined with pump spells like Sarah's Boon and Sarah's Embrace. No doubt added, because they have Sarah's name in their titles. Seriously, this deck is as flavorful as possible. It really is impressive. Now that we've talked about the deck as it stands, I have to say one thing. Financially speaking, Divine is worth more than its fair share of the total cost of the anthology. A Chroma Angel of Wrath alone is almost $20. That doesn't include the rest of the rare angels that all have some value because this is magic, and there are more angel collectors than any other creature type by far. Even more than dragons. Yeah, I just... If you're looking to get money out of this thing, Divine by itself makes a great argument, just saying. So we have this awesome angel tribal deck. What do we add to make it truly the bomb? There are so many cards to add to something like this to make it better. We'll start with what I would consider staples. Angel of Jubilation is a great anthem effect and makes most black decks super sad. Baneslayer Angel is, well, Baneslayer Angel. Flying First Strike Lifelink, this is the card that makes Sarah Angel feel really bad for even existing. Inferiority complex to the max. If you want something a bit more cheeky, Blinding Angel forces your opponents to skip combat steps, which is always hilarious, and Herald of War makes all of your angels super cheap to play. Honestly, think of something you want in an angel deck, and I'm sure there's an angel for you. Hate aggressive strategies, Sunblast Angel, don't want your opponents using their Lanoir Elves, Linvala, hate blue players, Iona Shield of Emeria, you get my point, the list is near endless. The last card I'll suggest is just mean. You basically play this card when you want to end a friendship or punish your friends for not playing enough targeted removal. Platinum Angel is a mean card, it just is. Enjoy being alone for the rest of your life, you monster. Much like how the Divine deck was flavorful and packed with a ton of angels, the Demonic deck is just as flavorful, except this time it's filled with demons and imps and other disgusting things. Where one of the main themes of the Divine deck is life gain, one of the main themes of the Demonic deck is sacrifice effects. Perfectly fitting. Cruel Edict, Abyssal Gatekeeper, and Barter in Blood are here, just to name a few. Basically anything to get rid of a Chroma is what the Black deck is all about. Besides Sacrifice Outlets, Demonic wants to play value creatures that straight up disrupt Divine as much as possible. Abyssal Spectre, along with bombs like Kuro, Pit Lord, and Reaver Demon are seriously bothersome cards to deal with, especially because Kuro and the Reaver don't even need to attack to be useful. Out of combat abilities are not easy to deal with. The rest of the creatures are the classic black creature spread, a ton of power while simultaneously hurting you. The premier card in the deck, Lord of the Pit, is the perfect example of this. Outrageously powerful, but very, very mean to you. More players have died to their own Lord of the Pit than their opponents. D probably. Just saying, the card is nuts. Please don't kill yourself. D PSA, don't die to your own Lord of the Pit. D don't. The spell package gets a round of applause for flavor here. I would clap, but it would spike the microphone and then I'd get yelled at. Anyways, since the deck is so flush with sacrifice effects, Breeding Pit makes perfect sense here. 
The card forces you to give something every turn, but rewards you with a token that you can throw at stuff. Not only that, but I'm pretty sure this Thrall token can only be obtained through the Divine vs. Demonic Duel decks. They're actually worth a decent amount of money, like $3 each decent. Yeah, it's the more you know. Again, the spells are what you'd expect. Corrupt, Consume, Spirit, Dark Banishing, Duress, we've seen all of these before. There are two cards, however, that stick out to me. The first is Promise of Power. While it's not worth a whole bunch of money, the card is amazing in Commander and Casual Play. It's just good to have one, honestly. The other one, and the reason the Divine vs. Demonic set is so sought after, is Demonic Tutor. Sitting at a healthy $25, this printing of Demonic Tutor is the only one with this art, and besides the $250 Judge Gift promo version, the only one printed in the modern frame. Of course, by modern frame, I mean super modern frame now that it comes with the hologram marker and everything. This Demonic Tutor is going to be worth money. Classic tutor spell, always going to be valuable. The value here is, is getting ridiculous, honestly. We'll come back to the overall value in a minute. Before we get there, I want to talk about what you can add to Demonic to make it even more diabolical. Harvester of Souls is a great place to start. Most decks you come up against won't be using tokens, so you'll get a ton of triggers off this sense when a creature is sacrificed, it dies. While this doesn't apply to your thrall tokens, it applies to pretty much everything else. Another strong demonic choice is Runescar Demon. If you're going for the late game, this is a 7 mana demonic tutor on a huge 6-6 six, six flyer. Definitely one of my favorite casual and commander black creatures right now, it's worth the inclusion. If you want to go really deep in the demon plan, play Bloodspeaker. Not many players know about this card. It's a great way to tutor up whatever demon you need. The last two cards I want to mention are Obnixilis the Fallen, because Landfall is fundamentally broken, and Dread Kaka Demon, mainly because when you're going big with demons, you gotta include this guy. He's huge, his ability is a one-sided board wipe, and he's disgusting to look at. It's like the perfect demon. The last thing I'll say about Divine vs. Demonic is this. Dual Decks Anthology is almost worth buying just for these two decks. You get an Altered Art of Chroma, you get an Altered Art Lord of the Pit, special Thrall tokens, a new card frame for all these cards. I could go on, but I'll end with this. A Sealed Divine vs. Demonic is over $100 right now. While some of that value is because it's an old product and being sealed is cool, a lot of it comes from what's inside. If you aren't considering buying this set right now, make sure you really think about it. There's a lot here, especially with the holiday season coming up. Talk about a present that'll make a magic player love you. This'll do it. What do you all think of Divine vs. Demonic? Easily the most exciting pair of decks we've looked at so far. Just easily. Make sure to tune in tomorrow for our last dual deck spotlight on Garrick vs. Liliana. Another sweet strategy. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Mana Source, I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.